the other day on the Japanese uh, woodworking group that I'm part of on Facebook, we were discussing Japanese boat building saws and why they are the particular shape that they are. Well, I reckon that today I've worked it out. You can see there, it's, it's, got, it's got a fair bit of a curve. I've got to join this, these two boards together. This is for a Kenyan beehive that I'm working on on my other channel, on my everything else channel. To join this with hand tools is going to be rather tr tricky because these knots here and here, there's going to be all sorts of grain ch changes in grain direction. So I, I could do it, but it's difficult. Uh, the simple solution would be to flip the board so I've got this lovely clear grain on the jointed edge, but I want to use this hole here as a natural entrance for the bees coming in and out. Now, saw jointing is where, you, and with the rip blade, you cut between the boards. And so we've got a gap here. I can fit this Ryoba saw in that gap and then along here somewhere it's going to start cutting because these boards are touching here and there. That's fine when I've got a gap. But once I've done that a couple of times, I'm not going to be able to get a saw blade in that gap. And getting a Ryoba saw started mid-board like this if I needed to um, would be tricky. Now you could, you could work from one end to the other, but that would also be tricky. However, with a curved blade like this, I can start jointing these two boards with this saw at any point along these two boards. All right, so it's my theory that that's why these boards, well, that's why this boat building saw, which is a ripping boat building saw, and it's for, we know it's for jointing, uh, that's why they're the shape they are. So I'm gonna test that right now. Oh, I need to make a box for all my bench furniture. So I'm not looking all over the place for it all the time. When you're clamping these together, you don't want to clamp them too tight because uh, if you do, it's going to make it very difficult to saw. Just you just want them held in place. You don't want them pushed together. Well, it's better, but I'm not happy with this. You can see here I've got some wobble in my saw and I've actually got a wider cut here. And also what I reckon is uh, it would be better on the other side. So let's turn it over and have a look. All right, so lesson learned is that you do it from the bad side or the side that you're not gonna see because that's a much better fit. That's a much better fit. Of course, that makes sense in hindsight. Well, I hope that was useful to you. Uh, I've actually got a couple of these for sale uh, at the moment on eBay and in the sister group, that Japanese woodworking group I mentioned before, uh, which is the buy and sell group. Also, I'll put links for those in the description. Uh, and if you're watching this video sometime in the distant future, if I don't have these in stock when you come looking for them, I can get them. Uh, so yeah, um, and also make sure you subscribe to this channel because I'm regularly uh, doing videos like this where I sort of give my uh, journey <laughs> as I learn things about Japanese tools. Uh, but I was also sharing the things that I already know, particularly about tool restoration. And there's regular unboxing videos and videos where I'm giving stuff away. So I hope you enjoy, check it out, and uh, I'll catch you guys online.